I was born in Zimbabwe. The first four years of my life I spent there, and then we moved to South Africa. My family was already a Scientology family, my mother and my father, and the way I was brought up already, taking responsibility and holding your hat as a child. I was told that a child's hat is to keep their bedroom tidy, to make their breakfast, to make sure their parents are happy, um, to learn at school, um, and to basically solve all the problems that they ever have, you know. Does that strike you odd now that uh, your job as a child is to make your parents happy? Um, yes, very. I th also, I think it's very unfair now because I wasn't given the privileges of a normal childhood just to just be a child and, you know, just have your own freedom and be free to learn and make your own mistakes. But, because you have to just take all your responsibility for yourself and the people around you as well. I did the communication course for children. There were always problems between my stepmother and myself, so my dad said um, a course in the org might help. At the age of five? Yeah. What, what type of communication course is that for a five-year-old? Well, I don't really remember the whole course, um, but I just remember doing word clearing um, and using little blocks of wood and making sentences. Um, I didn't I didn't enjoy it, but I enjoyed um, going home and having my parents be so proud of me and happy with me. So I was happy to do it because it made them happy. Did you grow up in a, uh, in a Scientology school or did you go to public schools? Um, no, always to public schools. I don't even think there were Scientology schools in South Africa when I was there. It was very new then. I joined the SEAL when I had just turned 16. One day my dad came into my room and said, um, this was after my parents had divorced, that um, his girlfriend didn't want me to stay with them. So he said, I must move out. So I said, well, where to? So at first I did a bit of babysitting for Scientologists, and in return I could stay with them, and that went on for about two weeks. And then a friend of mine said, you know, I want you to meet some people, and there were recruiters from FLAG and Denmark and England, um, and they told me about the Sea Org. And my dad said, yeah, join the SEAL because, you know, there you have a place to stay, you have food to eat. So you were, in essence, forced into the Sea Org. Yeah. Out of desperation. Yeah. And I was happy that I had um, that opportunity, that I had any opportunity to take care of myself because I didn't know what to do and this, where to go. It sounded very sudden. Very, yeah. But it also sounded good because it was a place that, um, where everybody helped each other, everybody was ethical. Um, they wanted to save the planet. Um, it was just, it was wonderful. It was like having a family again after I had lost my family. Is this what you were told or is this what you found once you got there? That's what I was told. And what was the reality? Um, the reality was when I got there that, um, first of all, the very first thing that happened was I had, um, I had to do a sec check. Um, then they took away all sorts of personal things like perfume products um, and books that they thought were inappropriate. Um, I was told that all the friends I had who were non scientologists I was not supposed to be in contact with them anymore. So it was a very controlled environment from the very first day, right from the very first hour. So you're told not to communicate with any of your friends? Well, those who were not in Scientology or who were maybe against Scientology. And did you find that odd? Um, I found very odd, and I, d I found very um, I don't, uncomfortable. I didn't, I don't like to be controlled that way. Did you try to contact any of your friends? I still kept in contact with them, which was one of the reasons that I stayed on the EPF for so long, because I was always in ethics. Explain the EPF. Well, if you spell it out, it's the Estates Project Force. Um, and they basically do um, physical work all over the base, from cleaning out sewage pipes to we built a sauna when I was there, a little miniature castle from outside. I'm still proud of that. I mean, I built it. <laughs> uh, we were digging trenches all night, carrying cement sa uh, sacks around that were 30 kilograms heavy. And you were how old? 16. And, and how long were these days? The days were a minimum of 15 hours. And was any of that time spent in schooling? Well, five hours we were studying Elron Hubbard's books, his courses, his SEAL courses, 
um, and we had half an hour for dinner and half an hour for lunch. And if we ever wanted to go to the toilet, um, then we had to go with our buddy and we had to double time to, it's a, a, a mixture between a walk and running. Um, and we were not allowed to go anywhere alone. You had to always go with your buddy. And you were not allowed even five minutes break in between. And there was no difference between men or women. So um, I remember the one time I was supposed to carry us one of these cement sacks and one of the um, people who was in my group, one of the young men said, um, no, he will take that. And then the in charge came over to us and said, no, she will take it. Because there's absolutely no difference between if you're a child or a grown up or a man or a woman. Would did they explain why that was? Yes, because what really counts is your 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 faith and your spirit, not your body. Your body is it's basically just you know in the way. So you you may be sixteen or you could be ten. Your your thetan is uh, millions of years old. But what I mean, it doesn't even matter how old you are. What only it, the only thing that matters is that you can do anything, no matter how old you are or what sex you are. Did you find that you could do anything? No. Uh, I mean, I hurt myself so often on the EPF that I was always in ethics and um, always having accidents. I was bitten by a spider and my whole arm swell up and I wasn't allowed to go to a doctor and just stuff like that. Or we were working with acids without any gloves or protection and it went, you know, it got onto your skin and your skin was eaten away and it started getting infected. Now the EPF is different from the RPF, mm. in that the RPF is punishment, right? Or you're, you're, you have to make amends by being on the RPF. Mm. The EPF was just... Why, why were you on the EPF? The EPF is there to prepare you for the Sea Org. It's there to make sure that you are um, even qualified to be in such a tough group like the Sea Org. So you have to go through yeah. the EPF. All the weak ones get filtered out in the EPF. How many people didn't make it to the Sea Org? Most of them did. I mean, maybe one or two out of one group of ten people, if, if that. Most of them, um, because the Sea Org needs people desperately, so they, they usually all make it, but um, some of them take longer. Like I took three months to do the EPF, where you're supposed to do it in two weeks, two to three weeks. And I was on it for three months because I was always having accidents. What is the criteria for graduating from the EPF? You have to have done all five courses, and you have to be able to confront MEST, which is matter, energy, space, and time, which basically is physical work, anything from you know crawling around in sewage pipes to building saunas, digging trenches, sitting in, in dirt with like hundreds of spiders crawling all over, and I, I'm, I hate spiders. Um, that's that's what you have to do, and I mean, the, the, the most important thing of all is that the EPF in charge has to say, you've, you've passed. Yeah. Well, do you remember the courses for the EPF? Um, well, there was Scientology Introduction to Ethics, there was the Personal Grooming course, which taught you how to clean your shoes, how to um, look after your seal hat, your cap, um, you know, keeping personal hygiene, nails, um, brushing your teeth, men keeping their hair short, not on the collar. Um, I don't remember what all of them were called, but in the one course you also learned, maybe that was also personal grooming, about how to clean windows with newspaper, how to dust, you know, not in circles, you had to take it from the one end to the other and then fold the cloth, stuff like that. So there was, there was a rule for everything in the Sea Org. Did you find uh, any of this uh practical or, 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 or more useful than any of the other cleaning methods you ever used? Um, no, Did no. you find it was odd that it, everything was so regimented? Um, I found it very annoying that you, you had to, that these rules were put there because it just, it was like, you know, you have to, everyone has to do the thing, everything the same way. You, you couldn't be an individual anymore. I mean, I've been cleaning and looking after a five-headed family for years. I know how to dust. I have my own method to dust. I mean, why am I going to dust like this now? And I didn't. I mean, that but was that just did, me. That didn't hold you back, though, in graduating. It was, it was well, uh, I didn't tell him that I wasn't going to dust like that. And when I had to do the practical, um, you had to do all sorts of practical things on these courses, then of course I dusted like I was told to dust, like I had what learned to dust. Yeah. Right. But 
Otherwise, I did everything as I was always used to it, unless somebody was going to watch. <laughs> so you graduate, and now you're part of the Sea Org. 